Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dr. Rostenberg again from BeyondMTHFR.com. And today I'm bringing you some important information about why the body can have a pain syndrome, why we have chronic pain, and anxiety. And we're going to look at the, the genetic roots of those two conditions and we're going to relate that back to genes that uh, we often see such as CONTMAO and MTHFR. So that's our goal today is to um, talk about how those relationships exist and why people experience high anxiety and high pain and, and how that's genetically uh, related. Like all things in the body, the dopamine levels, your adrenaline levels, your hormone levels, your blood pressure, your temperature, everything exists on a bell curve. There is, or sometimes it's called an inverted U, okay? But basically it's a bell curve and you have this optimum range of function in the middle. This is our goal. Regardless of what disease we have, regardless of what our challenge is in life, we're trying to put ourselves in this sweet spot where we don't have a deficiency we don't have an excess health is not found at the extremes so along those lines I'm just going to touch on this real quickly that low dopamine is really common in our society and it may be in common in your life as well and what you're going to notice is that people's mood changes when they don't eat if they eat real sugary foods they get high and they're hyperactive they're sort of overly active with too much dopamine and as their blood sugar drops again then their dopamine crashes and so this is the essence behind eating you know a uh, high carbohydrate breakfast you feel good for a little while big glass of orange juice some oatmeal wham you're feeling great a couple hours later you're feeling terrible now you have cravings again so you go for more processed food more donuts more stimulants more coffee more energy drinks etc and that that process plays out on and on and on millions of times a day all over our country. So it's really not a good thing to be on this feast or famine uh, bandwagon because you keep your, your low and then your high and your low and your high. So our goal always with these body functions with physiology is to be in the optimum level. So low dopamine, it's behind addictions, it's behind cravings, it's behind mood changes when you don't eat. Uh, your body's just expressing different uh, brain functions as your dopamine levels drop. And you'll, you'll basically do anything to raise your dopamine. So if your dopamine is really low, you may have more of an addictive behavior pattern and then you may get up, you know, people with chronic low dopamine may end up using drugs or uh, substance abuse and they're really what they're trying to do is self-medicate by raising dopamine. And there's obviously a much better way. And on the high end of dopamine and adrenaline, um, I'm using those terms interchangeable here today, uh, dopamine and adrenaline are basically both going to get metabolized by CONT and uh, so they're both going to be affected by these genes. But high dopamine is related to schizophrenia, uh, anxiety, you know, rapid heartbeat, fluttering heartbeat, pounding heartbeat, high blood pressure, inability to sleep, being paranoid, chronic pain. This is why people who you know, abuse, let's say, uh, too much uh, marijuana, that's been in the news lately. So THC, like all drugs, boosts your dopamine. Um, and elevating your dopamine can lead to elevated adrenaline. And so, you know, people who are chronically, uh, you know, self-medicating with marijuana, they may have issues with anxiety and paranoia, which is sort of associated with that group of people or that, that drug effect anyway. And so you're, here's the reason why. It's just it's driving, just knocking people off the high end of the bell curve and then they get these symptoms. So stuff to keep in mind as we move forward today. Um, the real snips of concern are the COMT gene, the MAOA, and the MTHFR. And this is uh, pulled out of Sterling's app, the report from MTHFRsupport.com. It's easy to read, um, and it's kind of the one that we reference as the, the best. But you can see that when there's yellow or red, there's a dysfunction in that system. Um, it's not always the case, but in all of these genes, the red or yellow means it's going slower than it normally should. MTHFR plays a role in pain and anxiety as well and, and the connection there is going to be through the through the aspect of overmethylation. so when you have a situation where someone's um, you know willingly or unwillingly you know getting exposed to too much folate they're taking too many supplements um, sometimes a gut infection can cause really high levels of folate they can cause overmethylation. I mean we've documented that in other videos uh, but regardless of the cause the overmethylation basically drives the folate cycle too fast 
and you end up producing excess BH4 and you basically produce way too much serotonin and dopamine which as we'll find out is going to cause way too much adrenaline leading to pain and anxiety okay so the moral of the story today is um, the cause of pain the cause of anxiety can be traced back to an inappropriate levels of catecholamines and the genes that are responsible for breaking them down and my I'm gonna walk you through that here right now so if you want to find out if an individual maybe you maybe a family member has too much catecholamine activity too much adrenaline in their brain just ask them how they're sleeping if they're laying awake for three hours before they can fall asleep every night and their mind is racing and thinking about everything in the world but actually going to sleep then you're looking at someone with way too much adrenaline in their brain the side effect of adrenaline on our central nervous system is that it causes hyper arousal it will arouse you it will wake you up uh, people that are waking up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom or for blood sugar reasons or blood sugars dropping they always wake up at between 3 30 and 4 every night well the reason you're waking up is when your blood sugar drops your adrenaline gets elevated and voila you're no longer sleeping and you typically have to go to the bathroom so these are patterns we see uh, look at the opposite pattern look at a narcoleptic who can fall asleep anywhere uh, looking at their chemistry you're gonna find that they don't have really any adrenaline at all in their brain and it's dropping too quickly and that's shutting them down they're able to fall asleep anywhere so on one end you have narcolepsy on the other end you have insomnia and you're gonna have two different um, uh, levels of, of adrenaline in that body okay so high, high adrenaline is poor sleep high adrenaline also increases tingling burning numbness like in both hands and both feet strange feel, strange sensations throughout your body and it also causes transient memory loss and depression and we know this because uh, studies like the one I'm showing you was looking at firefighters who have a stressful job and many of you listening out there also uh, experience stress like we all do and we act we react to stress differently and part of the point of this video and the work we're doing is to show that your genetics determine whether stress is a mild thing for you or a really huge toxic blast for you and you need to know you know which person you are so you can make the changes in your life to you know moderate that effect it's not stress that makes us sick guys it's how we react to it all right and if you don't break down your adrenaline very fast you're going to react to stress in a negative way so this was a study that said basically the firefighters that have tingling burning in the sensations burning sensations in the extremities toes hands arms legs numbness paresthesias and poor memory you know brain fog episodes for a few hours at a time and depression that group of people had about double the levels of plasma epinephrine and norepinephrine but basically the dopamine level was unchanged so I would interpret that as saying you know they're producing adrenaline like everybody else they're just not breaking it down very fast and we're gonna explain why now it's not just dopamine and adrenaline that's the problem high serotonin can also cause high catecholamines so going back to this slide real quick you can see that overmethylation drives both serotonin and dopamine higher and here's your reference for showing that high serotonin stimulates the adrenal axis which ultimately leads to an increase in uh, you know adrenal hormones cortisol and epinephrine so it's not just dopamine it's it's serotonin and dopamine causing this problem um, and then again if you have a situation where you don't break down your uh, your neurotransmitters of stress your epinephrine and your norepinephrine if you don't break those down you're gonna have higher cortisol okay it's all about like a snowball effect the more stress hormones you have in neurotransmitter form the odds are that you'll have higher stress hormones in the form of the glucocorticoid the steroid form so they're gonna feed on each other and sort of drive this fight-or-flight system and this is just gonna ramp up your nervous system it's good, definitely gonna affect your gut um, we did another video about the stress gut connection that's a good one to look at it kinda of shows that people who have COMT who don't break, break down norepinephrine are going to have uh, gut dysbiosis more often as well so there's always that gut gut brain gut pain gut anxiety connection and that's part of how it works um, the reason why we get pain syndromes when we have these genes the COMT and the MAOA is that the stress hormone epinephrine makes the pain fibers in your muscles and joints much more sensitive to mechanical pressure so 
If stubbing your toe used to hurt you, now you just brush your toe against something and all of a sudden it hurts the same. The mechanism behind that is that these C fibers are making that happen. Um, in terms of your body's neurology, you have different sizes of nerves. Some are like a super highway going really fast and some are really slow. Uh, the C fibers are slow. That's why when you stub your toe, you have a couple of seconds going out. That's going to hurt. You can kind of talk to yourself for a second and then the pain comes. So there's a little delay between the injury and the pain. And that's because C fibers are going a little slower. But definitely epinephrine circulating in your body from high adrenaline from slow breakdown due to your genes predisposes you to uh, pain syndromes. Uh, again, the, another just comment on that pain fiber activation is that it also causes a leaky brain. So you got high stress, you release stress hormones, you get tingling, numbness, burning, transient memory loss, brain fog, depression because you're not breaking down these hormones. You may have like rapid heartbeat, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, weird sympathetic dystrophy stuff going on. And that's not all. Because of your COMT and MAO, MAOA genes, you also get a leaky blood-brain barrier. And so this is how this, this snowball just sort of, you know, really impacts our life. This is why stress, overreacting to stress and having too much stress in your life is so toxic. And this is why cleaning up your gut, working on anti-inflammatory lifestyle, meditation, prayer, spiritual awareness and connectivity with other people is just really good. It heals us. And these are the, you know, the different ways that, that it happens. But basically, injury to those C fibers I was talking about causes permeability of the spinal cord barrier and the blood brain barrier. And we don't want that because we don't want what's in the blood spilling into the brain that brings inflammation into the brain. Now let's get into the genetics a little bit. So we know that COMT is going slower, but we, we have a lot of data here that says it's, it's related to pain. So this is from 2014, just a few months ago. Um, people with chronic pain definitely have an upregulation of uh, you know these pain fibers. They're, being, they're extra sensitive to pain, like I just showed you, but they have too much epinephrine in their bloodstream because they're not very good at breaking it down. It's, you know, essentially that's, that's it in a nutshell. And this says the same, COMT metabolizes stress hormones, contributes to pain in humans and animals. There you go. Patients with abnormal, abnormal pain have a problem with their COMT function. Well, those of us in the methylation world have known that for a while, and that's just good you know, confirmation. Here's another study from 2006, looked at three different types of people. The big white bar, people who don't have a lot of pain you know, low pain threshold, average pain threshold, and high. And remember, I told you the high pain threshold comes from adrenaline upregulating these fibers. So the more adrenaline you have, the higher your pain threshold, you know, you're going to have high, you're going to feel a pain much more, um, much more often. Okay. So the people with the HPS, the high pain, high pain, high pain syndrome people, um, they showed a 25 to 18 fold reduction in COMT speed. So this is a really slowed down COMT system. We don't really know all the different factors that go into controlling enzyme speed. I, I don't know if we ever will, but we can. you can take it to the bank that if you suffer with a lot of chronic pain, you probably are not breaking down your adrenaline very effectively and you need to go through a process working with somebody who can help you, uh, you know, work forward from there. Um, I really like this slide. It shows two different types of people. The green people in this category have fast comped activity. They are going to not have a lot of adrenaline circulating around, given the same amount of stress. The other person, the orange, they're going to have a lot of adrenaline circulating. So the person with a lot of adrenaline, like we've talked about, is going to have heightened sensitivity to nociceptive pain, basically pain in your, you know, stubbing your toe pinching yourself, just activities that use your sort of your skin and your, your body shell, sending that signal back to your nervous system, that's no susceptive pain. But for every, you know, negative, there's a, there's a positive. And people with these slow COMT genes are also protected from neuropathic pain. And what that means is that they're protected from pain that comes from the central nervous system, like diabetic neuropathy or, or other kinds of diseases that aren't actually related to the tissue being injured. It's just like a, a misfiring of the central nervous system. So even though you may be more sensitive to pain, um, you know, in your hands and feet and the rest of your muscles, 
you are protected from other types of pain, um, which we have to at least acknowledge that. Um, showed this slide before. I really like it. It basically shows this is a postsynaptic neuron. This is presynaptic. So this is a model of the synapse in your brain. And when your COMT is slowed, what's essentially going to happen is you're going to have more dopamine floating around in your, in your synapses. And more dopamine can give you an advantage when you're healthy. So when things are balanced, it's going to give you an advantage. It's going to allow you to be a little more, you know, form a better memory, do a little better at memorization. You may be, you know, uh, better at recall. So it can actually make you smarter. It can influence your intelligence and help you focus. The dark side of that is that if you get too much dopamine, you can develop like neuropsychiatric problems such as schizophrenia and sort of schizoid behavior. And those of us who know schizophrenic people know that they're very intelligent and that's when they're in the zone in that right part of the bell curve, but they're easily tipped over the edge into the hyper dopamine situation, the hyper adrenaline. And the research uh, shows that's really one of the driving factors. So moral of the story is if you have a slow CUMT, don't, don't be upset. Just know what your tendencies are and you may, may make you smarter. So that's always a good thing. I just want to mention one thing about caffeine and COMT. Uh, because caffeine causes, caffeine is a secreted gog. It sort of uh, causes the body to release adrenaline. So when we're already, we've already been talking about people with too much adrenaline. When you throw coffee in the mix, uh, it gets a little worse. You can compound your problems. So I don't have anything against coffee. Uh, coffee is actually a healthy thing for most people, but the COMT gene is really going to get in the way here uh, and make you more susceptible to the negative side effects of stress. So that's what you need to know about coffee. If you're feeling stressed out and you can't sleep and you're exhausted and your blood pressure is high, you know, you got to give up the stimulant because it's, it's whipping a tired horse. This gray bar right here basically shows that, you know, in page, people who are drinking over 800, and 800 milliliters of coffee who had the who had the low functioning COMPT gene, they were much more likely to have a cardiovascular event. So yeah, adrenaline, like that racehorse running the race who dies when their heart explodes from all the adrenaline pulsing through their veins, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're also susceptible to the negative side effects of adrenaline. That'll be a theme that I revisit over and over again, but I'm just, uh, think, you know, just encouraging you to think about the ideas in this video and uh, share them with someone if, if you know who may be suffering with these issues and uh, adrenaline is, is good we need it but too much of it it gets to be a problem and thank you again for your time if you have any comments or questions please reach out uh, check out my my website and blog beyond and have a good day